Items? Okay, all right, we will talk about items. Okay, we will talk about items then. I said, I don't mind. Okay. What up, LaShawn? LaShawn, you're going to know everything. Um, you're going to know everything I'm talking about for the most part anyways. So once again, if you're just joining, the information that we're about to talk about, it's going to be generic. It's not going to be your situation exactly. There's no way I can possibly describe your exact situation, okay? Because there's millions of game scenarios, okay? So everything that I'm about to say, you have to think about it from that perspective, okay? I'm going to give you the basic ideas of what the item is, what it does, and everything, and like what I personally would think of it as effective, okay? So we'll go through. It's going to be quick because I'm going to try and go through like as many of these as I can. Okay, so like Bloodthirster, okay? So when I think of Bloodthirster, this is what I think of. Obviously, it's a, a health uh, steal item, but it's not just a health steal item, okay? Bloodthirster is a defensive health um, like vampirism item. Yeah, it gives you crit, it gives you damage, and it gives you 15% spell vamp, but it also grants you a big shield. So when I'm trying to think as a, like, let's just say an ADC, because typically this is the champion that would build Bloodthirster. If I'm trying to think like, okay, do I build something like Bloodthirster or do I build something like Blade of the Rune King? I basically ask myself two questions. It's like, okay, do I one, have enough attack speed already? If I do... Are they tanky? If they're tanky, then I'm probably going Blade of the Rune King. If they're not tanky, uh, then I'm going Bloodthirster. Or what I'll ask myself, am I dying because of burst? If I'm dying because of burst and I know I need a lifesteal item, I'm probably going to do Bloodthirster because the shield passive that you get with Bloodthirster is actually going to help you as like a defensive item as well um, on both standpoints. So like... That's how I look at uh, Bloodthirster. Like, I really like Bloodthirster on Graves because, as first item, because it helps him be tankier, but also gives him lifesteal and things of that nature. So, like, that's kind of how I think about this item. Now, Guardian Angel is, like, a super solid item. Guardian Angel, everyone knows what Guardian Angel does. It's super simple. It's super easy. But a lot of times, I think people don't know when to build Guardian Angel, okay? So... And I know that sounds weird to say, like, oh, everyone knows when you, you build Guardian Angel last. Or you build Guardian Angel, like, when you can't die. Like, yes, that's true, but guess what? There's situations where you can't die and you still don't build Guardian Angel, okay? And then there's situations where you don't build Guardian Angel first. You actually build it early. So, as an example, let's say you start off a game and you just really, really killed it, okay? Let's say the game goes and, like, you're six and O oh really early, okay? Or maybe you get to like nine and O oh really early and you've already completed like two items and your boots. Well, you may want to consider building Guardian Angel a little bit early because you're worth such a big shutdown gold and stopping giving that shutdown gold is huge. And you're already so far ahead that you're going to get hard focused. And um, when the team bursts you down, if you come back, just because of how far you are ahead in general, It'll make it easier for you to 1v9 if you can think about it in that perspective, okay? Um, and then obviously, so when I say late game where you can't die versus you can't die and you don't build Guardian Angel, so you have to think about it this way, okay? So like let's say it's late game and you can't die, okay? And, and if you die, you lose the game or it's late game and you can't die. So this is what I mean. If, you have, if you're the source of damage... That's the only way your team wins the game, okay? The only way your team wins the game, okay? Then, yeah, you want Guardian Angel. Now, if you're the source of damage and you're the only way the team wins the game, but you do not yet have enough damage, then you unfortunately have to not build Guardian Angel and you have to go into something risky. Now, majority of people will tell you, no, build Guardian Angel, it's the safer bet. And they are right, it is a safer bet. However, if you're really mastered your champion and you're really confident that you can stay alive and your team's peeling you really well, then you can say, okay, I'm not gonna build Guardian Angel, I'm gonna build one more attack damage item because 
in this situation, if I don't have that, like our team's not going to be able to win, okay? Static shift is an offensive weapon. You only build this item when you're ahead. Only when you're ahead. If you're behind, you don't build static shift. It's the most annoying thing to me when I see an ADC who's zero and four and they're building static shift, okay? You build Phantom Dancer when you're behind. You build static shift when you're ahead. That's basically all I'm going to say about that item, okay? Blade of the Rune Kings, really simple. You build it against tanks. If they have a bunch of tanks, you build it, okay? You build it versus tanks. It's, it's that simple. Uh, every single time, basically on every single like type of champion, because of the passive it has with the movement speed and the slow and the extra damage it does on hit uh, to max health, like you build it on champions, okay? Rapid fire cannon. Okay, I feel like this item actually needs a little bit of a buff personally. Rapid fire cannon to me is obviously like when you need that additional poke. So if you're in a game where like you need the first initial poke, that's a game where you go rapid fire cannon, okay? You don't just build rapid fire cannon because of the thing. So like, for example, on Caitlyn, okay? Caitlyn's a really good example for a rapid fire cannon. Lots of people build rapid fire cannon on Caitlyn just because of the additional attack uh, range it gives you. But Caitlyn already has really good attack range, okay? So why do people build it? So like, you build rapid fire cannon on Caitlyn for the games where you need that extra distance in order to poke sooner. And you have to be able to understand what that means. It's kind of hard to explain what it means. So I guess like the way that I would put it is um, they have a really good like engage comp and you need to be able to, you can't get close enough to them because they can quickly engage on you super fast. So you need the extra range for that initial poke. That would be kind of how I explain it. Hurricane's really only good on, like, a couple champions, like Jinx. That's about it. So, I mean, Hurricane's kind of like, it's a Jinx item for the most part. Yomo's Ghost Blade is, to me, uh, I know this is going to sound weird because we're talking about attack damage items. This is a very offense, because you have to realize there's such things as offensive items that are, 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 that are attack, and there's defensive attack items. Okay, like, Wits End's a defensive attack item. Phantom Dancer is a defensive attack item. Knight, uh, Edge of Knight's defense. Maw, defense. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so Yomo's Ghost Blade's offensive. So, like, typically champions that build Yomo's Ghost Blade either start Yomo's first or Black Cleaver first, okay? Yomo's is the game where you realize, hey, I have to get ahead this game. I have to get ahead early. So I'm going to build Yomo's. Or when you first build it and you start with the, uh, the freaking Longsword, you're still in the beginning deciding, do I start Black Cleaver or do I go into Yomu's? You build the Longsword first. If you get ahead, you go into Yomu's as long as you're comfortable with the fact that now you have to carry the game. Okay? And the other thing is when you build Yomu's, you should also delay your boot build a little bit sooner as well because of the passive of Yomu's as well. But if it's a game where you start off bad and it's a champion where you normally build Yomu's first, but you start off bad, you don't build Yomu's and you build Black Cleaver instead because Black Cleaver becomes more of a defensive offensive item for you, okay? You have to think about it in this perspective. Every item has the item that you build in the opposite situation, okay? Yomu's, I'm ahead, early, offense i'm gonna carry i did bad in the early game i'm not gonna build yomu's i'm gonna build black cleaver instead because this is going to help my end goal better and in the event that i keep doing bad it's better to have black cleaver than it is to have yomu's okay but like let's say if you start off good and you have yomu's well then you can switch to something more defensive and that nature as well okay Edge of Night, or I mean, uh, Dust Blade's super easy. You should only build Dust Blade on champions that can go invisible, and that are AD, obviously, okay? It's that simple. Steric's Gauge is another really simple item. You build it on bruisers primarily, and when you need a little extra health and also tankiness, but still gain damage. It's that simple. Infinity Edge is also a super simple item. You build it when you need additional damage and the additional crit, okay? And... 
I'll explain this crit thing. Well, so here's another thing I think a lot of times people uh, mistake going, and I'll do it because we're talking these two items right next to each other. Some people neglect crit for um, armor pierce, and you don't necessarily have to. Um, uh, is Yomu's good on Kha'Zix in most situations where you have a good early lead or not? I like Yomu's on Kha'Zix personally. I think it's pretty good. Now, this is what I will say, uh, Brits. I am not a super good Kha'Zix player. Um, so I, I, I don't want to give you really strong advice on Kha'Zix because I'm not a super uh, big Kha'Zix player. Um, and one more question. Can you please explain what is the difference between AP and AD? Yeah, so AP is um, ability power and AD is attack damage. So example, Fizz is AP, Jinx is AD, is basically what that means. Okay, so real quick, back to what I was saying. A lot of players, they mistake and not understanding when do you build crit and when do you build uh, armor pierce, okay? This is how you know. If a team is really squishy, you build crit, okay, over armor pierce. Even if they're building a little bit of armor, okay? So like, what do I mean a team's really squishy? Let's say you have a, um, let me think here. Um, let's say you have a cannon top. You have a, and this is just gonna be random champions, a Teemo mid, you have a Graves jungle, you have a Jinx, and you have a Nami. Okay, so that's the enemy team. And let's just say they're building some armor. Well, that game crit would be better than armor pierce, even if they have armor items, because those, those champions naturally have low armor scaling. So the damage that crit is going to give you is going to far surpass the damage that um, the armor pierce is going to give you. And this will even work on like some bruiser champs as well. You have to really look at like, okay, is not piercing through the armor the difference or is it my crit? You kind of have to pay attention to uh, what's pinging on the damage, okay? Just a little side note there for you. Okay, now, Mortal Reminder, this one's super simple. You build Mortal Reminder when they have healing champions. It's that simple. If they have healing champions and you're an attacking champion, you build Mortal Reminder. Black Cleaver, you build against tanky champions uh, because it allows you to add uh, stacks to armor piercing and armor shredding, okay? So, or you build it when you have a champion, like I said, who maybe goes Yomu's and you fall behind and you build Black Cleaver instead. Another thing, talking about Black Cleaver, um, <clears throat> so, actually, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll go to the next, that thing different. Man Immune, it's pretty simple, it's really, I mean, for 80 champions, it's really just a Varus and a um, Ezreal item for the most part, it's really all it is. It's a champion that uses a buttload of mana and you need the thing, it's really that simple. Trinity Force, okay. If you are wondering whether or not you should buy Trinity Force, and like I said, once again, these are generic examples for you. But if you don't know, should I buy Trinity Force if Trinity Force is in the kit build for your champion? Think about it like this. Trinity Force is what you build when champions are squishy, okay? If they're really tanky, you don't want Trinity Force, okay? If they're really tanky and Trinity Force is in your tree kit of items you could build, most likely the better item to build would either be Divine Sunderer or Black Cleaver, okay? If your champion can't build Black Cleaver, but still does build Trinity Force, the way you would look at it is if you're, the enemy team has like two super tanks, you would probably build Divine Sunderer or three, you build Divine Sunderer. If the team maybe only has one big tank, but a lot of like squishies and off, off bruisers, off bruisers means not super tanky, then you would build Trinity Force. Okay, that's kind of the example for that. Maw is, okay, so Maw, this is a really cool item. It's, it's a shitty item, it absolutely sucks, but it's a really cool item because of the dynamics of how to properly use it. And most people don't know how to properly use this item at all, okay? So you have to understand item to damage value, okay? Item damage value, 
okay? The, the actual value that the item gives you for the gold, go, or I'm sorry, gold to item value. That's what I meant to say, gold to item value. So when you're building Maw, you actually just want to stop right here at Hex Drinker at first, okay? You don't necessarily want to finish it other than Hex Drinker at the start, okay? So like here's a really good example. You, um, and you also have to examine the situation like, okay, how do I know if I build Hex Drinker or do I just go into something defensive like Spirit Visage, okay? This is how you know. This is how you know, do I build Maw or do I build Spirit Visage? And I'm just using Spirit Visage as an example. I'm not saying it has to be Spirit Visage. You build Maw when it's a game where you realize like, hey, I have to be more of a carry this game. Um, and Maw is also an item that you need to build early. Okay, it's not like so much of a late game item. Like, for example, like if I'm playing Riven and I'm going against a cannon in lane, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, first, I'm, when I first get into lane, I'm obviously going to buy my longsword, but the first item when I get back is going to be he is going to be the Hex Drinker, okay? And then after I finish Hex Drinker, I'm done. I'm not going to finish the Maw because the gold to value ratio of the item isn't very great once I finish Maw. Maw doesn't have as good of a gold to value ratio compared to other items that I could build that would help me move forward. And Maw gives me still a good amount of magic resist, damage, and it gives me mainly what I wanted, which is that uh, magic uh, shield for when I'm all in an AP champion, like um, a cannon when I'm playing um, Riven, for example. Okay? Now, if it's a game where... Um, and this is if you feel confident against the ch champion you're playing against. If you don't feel confident against the champion you're playing against, then you would do something more defensive like going into a Spectre's Crowl, okay? And you would just stop it at the Spectre's Crowl and then go into some damage or something of that nature, okay? Um, Death's Dance is super simple. It's you build this when you need to be a little bit more tanky, but you still need the damage and you realize that like you need to get some health back after you kill champions in order to continue your rampage, okay? It's a pretty simple item. Phantom Dancer is the most underused item. It's ridiculous how many people don't build this item. It literally, it's mind boggling that people don't understand the value of this item. This, I, like, if you guys were watching my stream, I think it was three days ago, I started off horrible. I started off, I think it was one in three, okay? And you know what I did? I built my first item, which was uh, Storm Razor, and then I built this. Phantom Dancer saved me three times in one game. I ended that game, if I remember correctly, I think it was like nine and three and something, I would have, however, died way more, not would have ended, would not have ended that game nine and three if I didn't go Phantom Dancer because of the lifeline passive that this thing gives you. That thing is massive, okay? You're, people are always so focused on damage, but they don't understand sometimes staying alive is worth sacrificing freaking 50 or 120 damage. Half of an auto attack late game. Half of a freaking auto attack. And it's only up after you get 100 stacks. You have to understand gold to item value and also game position value of what's going up. Okay, wits in, super easy, obvious item. You build wits in when you need some lifesteal. And there's lots of magic uh, damage champions, okay? Because a lot of things that people don't realize, wits end actually gives lifesteal as well. So if you're in a game where you really need a lot of lifesteal, okay, and they have some AP champions, you can build Wit's End because of the lifesteal damage it gives you, okay? Um, Essence Reaver, it's not really the greatest item either. It's not so much that it's a bad item. It's just not really good on a lot of champions as well. So, I mean, I can't really give you guys a lot of advice on this item to be 100% honest with you. Because I don't really play any champions that use it. I know Corky uses it. Um, I think Zaya can use it. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember what champions really use this item. I think Ezreal may use it too. I can't remember. Uh, Storm Razor to me is obviously just a really great starting item for most like ADC champions as well. Um, 
because it gives you everything you want. It gives you a good amount of attack damage, crit, attack speed, um, and then the energized attacks is awesome as well that it gives you. I think it's just a really overall super solid item. <clears throat> grudge is super easy as well. You build Grudge when you need armor pen, but not magic or not health deterioration uh, or crit. So you're building this item when you need to peel yourself, basically. So if you have a team that like can really get on you and you have plenty of damage and your team doesn't have a ton of peel and they don't have uh, lots of health regen, if you need to help peel yourself as a champion, this item is really good for that. Because if you read its passive, empowered attacks slow enemies by 30% for one second. So how do you know if you build this or Mortal or Lord or Dominix? That's how. Mortal, champions that heal. Grudge, when you need to peel yourself because you don't have champions that are peeling you. Or if you're in a game where people aren't peeling you at all, and you're like, man, I'm dying and I'm losing this game because like... I can't get them off of me, but you, you know you need armor pierce? Well, then you need to build grudge, okay? You need to build grudge. Slurry Charge Blade is, once again, kind of like a situational item. It's, it's kind of like a Yasuo item, really, but, you know, it works on a couple other champions as well. Um, but I feel like everybody kind of understands Slurry Charge Blade. It's when you're really trying to be a crit-type champion. It's for, like, high crit champions, only, like... Um, like, for example, it used to be broken as hell, uh, but it's really Yasuo, Yon, um, a couple ADCs that really use it. Uh, this item right here, how do you know when to build this item? This item is on um, ability-dependent champions. So if you're an ability-dependent champion, okay, this is the kind of item that you're really wanting. I love this item on Trist because basically Trist has really long cooldowns to her S1 and her S2 and her, all her abilities have long cooldowns. Because when her abilities are up, she's the best, she's the strongest ADC in the game, like, by far. Yeah, well, Zero, you're different. You're the only Yasuo I know that likes static shift and doesn't build a uh, charge blade. You're like the only Yasuo player that I know that does that. Uh, but if you're a really ability-dependent champion, uh, Quick Blades is really great. Um, so, like, example, Quick Blades is really good on Graves in the right situation. Um, you can, It's really good on Tristana in the right situation. It actually can be really good on, like, Riven in the right situation. <clears throat> Just as a quick example. Here's another item that is so underused. And I get it. It's not really the greatest item. It needs an armor pen buff. If they bring it up to 12 armor pen, I think that would be better, in my personal opinion. Everything else about the item... Um, <laughs> um, so this item, it's real simple. If you are getting caught out a lot, okay, this would be a bruiser item for the most part. But if you're dying because um, you're getting hit by like one-shot abilities or hook abilities um, or poke abilities and it's really stopping you from being able to truly engage, yeah, Vi would be... Um... Oh, wait. Sorry and Quick Blades on Vi is troll but carries, lol. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, it... So, Solaris on, on, on Vi would be pretty troll. If you're ahead, it would work, but it's really troll. Um, so, like, for example, this game, like, if you have tons of champions that just have, like, the one ability that, like, blows you up as soon as you engage, this is a really good item to stop that. Or, like, for example, let's say you're going against, like, a Vigar or a Blitzcrank, you know, or, like, a Teemo, where that initial ability... Okay, you think about it like that. The initial ability is what stops me from winning the fight. Then Edge of Night's a great item for you. The initial ability is what stops you from winning the fight. This one's super obvious. Everybody knows what this is. You solo lane, you're unkillable. The item is ridiculous when you're solo in the head. It's absolutely ridiculous. This item, like I said before, you build this item versus tanks. It's really that simple tanks or you're a champion that just needs extra sustain 
Uh, but for the most part, it's really good against tanks. This item's really simple as well, okay? If they have lots of shields, you want Serpent's Fang, okay? And then here, this item's really simple. They don't have a lot of healing or, okay, so you can still build Lord Donamix if they have healing. If it goes back to, think what I was telling you about the crit when we were talking about Infinity Edge and Mortal Reminder. Think about that. If that still applies, but you still need crit, or but you still need armor pen, then you can build Lord Dominix, okay? So like an example of what that would mean, let's say the enemy has um, a Riven Top, a Lee Sin Jungle, um, and then they have Oriana Mid, they have... Um, Let's say Jinx ADC and then support, they have Karma. That game, oh no, no, support, they have, uh, let's say like, let's say their support is um, Soraka. That game, you could potentially go Lord Dominic's as well. Because the crit that you're going to produce is going to be pretty huge. Um, if you're like 100% crit. And all those champions are fairly squishy. So the amount of crit that you'll produce versus the amount of healing they will receive is pretty big. Okay? Uh, what did you say? What's your opinion on a non situ on? What, in your opinion, is a non-situational item? <clears throat> what do you mean, LaShawn, a non-situate? What do you mean by that? Can you clarify what you mean by that? What do you mean by that, LaShawn? Give me a second here. I want to see what he has to say. <clears throat> are you talking about like a core item core item i mean core items it really just depends on the champion because technically any item can be situational depending on what champion you're playing and any item can be a core item depending on what, um, well, it depends on the champion you're playing. Yeah, that, that, that's an, I feel like that's an unanswerable question because it all depends. Okay, actually, you know what? A non, -situ a non situational item is boots. That's the only non situational item in the whole game because it's the only item that every single champion in the game has to build is boots. Um, So, because every champion has different items that they have to build. So, on one champion, Infinity Edge is a core item. You always build it no matter what. On another champion, um, so on and so forth. It's completely different. <clears throat> it all depends. Okay. So, Luden's Echo. <sighs> okay. Man, this is a lot. This is the way I look at Luden's Echo, okay? Okay. Luden's Echo is an item that I, I want to build if, one, I need damage, but I also need mana regen, okay? Or, I'm sorry, I need extra mana with cooldown reduction, but I need more burst. I need more burst, okay? That's basically the way that I look at Luden's, okay? If I'm looking for burst, but I also need mana because my champ is mana hungry, I need Luden's. More so an early game for me. This item is usually built like first or second on most champions, in my opinion. Um, Morella Namicon super simple. Uh, but here's the big mistake I see, especially at low elo. Not really so much at high elo. You never finish this item. You finish it last if you're building it. You build the orb. That's it. You build orb and you stop. Orb, stop. And then you finish the book last because... The gold to item value ratio is low. It's very low. All right? 
this item is really self-explanatory as well. You build Void Staff when you need to pierce um, champions. Um, I actually did a little post a while back talking about actually the difference between ability power and uh, magic pen. So there are situations where magic pen is better than ability power, okay? Because of the damage ratios that you get from magic pen versus um, ability power. Something I've been experimenting with, and it's pretty interesting. I think it, I actually think it is, it works pretty well. Uh, but otherwise, this item is really simple. They have lots of tanks. They have lots of magic resist. You build it. This item is pretty core on almost every single um, AP champion in the game. Rabadon's Death Cap. Obviously, I'm sure everyone knows what this item is. One of those super core items that basically every champion builds. It gives you a crap ton of AP. Okay. This item is also really simple. It only really works on a couple champions for the most part. You build it on uh, Morgana and you build it on um, Singed. And there's like a couple more champions that you can build it on. You don't necessarily have to build it on. But it's pretty simple and self-explanatory. This item, you build against tanks. Okay? Champions that have lots of health. That's what you build this item. That's how you know if you should build this item. Do they have lots of tanks, lots of health, and we need to percent health damage them? That's really simple. Rod of Ages, really overused item because the gold to item value ratio on this is massive, absolutely massive, because once it hits full stacks, the additional ability power, because you're getting 120 ability power from this. I don't know if you guys realize this, okay? This is the highest ability power item in the game. You get, once this thing is fully stacked, okay, you need to read this, okay? Okay, uh, right here. Each stack provides 20 health, 10 mana, and 6 ability power, stacking at a rate of 1 every 45 seconds. Max stacks providing 200 health, 100 mana, and 60 ability power. When this is fully stacked, it gives 120 ability power, okay? 400 mana, and 450 health. For 2,800. And it only takes um, about 8 minutes to finish. To fully stack. About 8 minutes. Okay? And so if you're good at the game, you could... Uh, or if you're good at farming, you can actually finish this item about a minute before dragon spawns. Okay? And that means basically by about 12 minutes... This item alone would provide 120 ability power for you. Super slept on item. I don't understand why people don't build this item more. Because it makes you tanky. It gives you a crap ton of ability power. gives you a crap ton of mana. Super slept on item. This item is really simple as well. You have an AP champion that does auto attacks. It's that simple. This item is really simple as well. You have a champion that uses a crap ton of mana. Spams abilities constantly. You build this. This item's super simple as well. You're playing an ability power champion that's really reliant on autos in order to effectively utilize its damage. You utilize this. Putting these two items together is really strong because their passives, the way they work together, are ridiculous. You're able to proc passives over and over and over again. This item is really simple as well, okay? As a support item, okay? Think about what this says. When you heal or shield an allied champion, both you, both of you gain 10 to 30% attack speed and attacks deal 16 to 30 magic damage for 6 seconds. Regen effects do not trigger sensor. So, if you are support and you're building this item, basically the way you have to look at it is, does my champion benefit from attack speed? If the answer is yes... This is an item you really want, a.k.a. if you have a Jinx on your team. You really want this item if you're a support, as long as you can shield or heal them. All right? This item's crap. I hate this item. This item needs some type of rework. Nobody really builds this item anymore. I never see this item built anymore. It's just a crap item. It just needs work. Honestly, I don't really have anything to say about this item because it's, just, it's really not that good. They need to do something to make it better. I never see anybody build this item anymore. This item's good on like a couple champions. 
you know, um, like Lux builds it. There's a couple other champions. I don't really know, to tell you the truth. I don't know a lot about this item. This item's really cool because it's ability crit. So kind of like in the exact same way um, we were talking about crit before. If, if you need more burst, Infinity Orb's the way to go, okay? Think about what's happening in the game. Like, okay, I'm hitting them, I'm doing damage, but I need more of a pop to it, then yeah, Orb's probably what you need. This item is another item I see people. If you're support and you're building this item, you have to ask yourself, does the champion that I'm supporting rely more on auto attacks or abilities? If it's abilities, you go this, okay? That's the way you do it. Shielding and healing, okay? So if you're a Janna, as an example, if your champion that you're supporting, the ADC you're supporting, thrives more off of abilities like an Ezreal, you would want this. If it's a Jinx, you'd want this. It's that simple. Here's another really easy item to example. Uh, Crystal Reflector, you need AP, but you need some armor, AKA you're going against a Zed, something like that in the mid lane, a Jace. Um, but you still need, you can't build tank because of the type of champion you are. Uh, you can build this, okay? Super simple. This item works a lot in the way of Edge of Night. You need magic resist. You can't get hit by the one, the one ability that stops you from being able to engage. Simple. You build this. It blocks the first ability. Gives you some magic resist for the second abilities. And then um, it's like a defensive item. These are items that you build. Like So often people won't build these items on the champions. Yeah, they're not the best item, but sometimes it will help you actually win the game. It literally will help you win the game. Um, there was a game that I built this item on... Um, who was it? I think it was Oriana, which I would never normally build this item, but I kept dying from like, so I can't remember what ability it was, just some random ability. After I built this item, I stopped dying. I just absolutely destroyed the game. This item is more of a support item. Basically, if you're an item, a champion that can, you know, provide multiple attacks on other champions, it basically allows. So if you're, if you're like a support and you're like, I need to help my team do more damage, this is a great item because it does area of effect. So like this item is also like if you have a champion that can affect multiple champions at the same time, this item is really great. Honestly, I don't know a lot about this item. So it's kind of difficult for me to like give you a lot of information about this item. I don't know a lot about it. Uh, very few champions. I know like some people say it's good on Oriana. Um, I never build on Oriana. But basically champions that need a little bit more movement speed. I can't really give you guys good information about this item because honestly, I've never built it one time. Um, you know who this item would be is really good on though? Uh, if you like <laughs> Zoe, Zoe, because movement speed is actually a damage boost for Zoe because it allows her to uh, cover more ground, which allows her S1 to do more damage. This item is really self-explanatory. Um, you need sustain. So if you have a game basically where you're dying a lot, not because like you're not tanky enough, but because you just can't survive long enough due to sustain. Like you can't be tanky because you need the damage, but you need to survive longer. Maybe you need sustain. This is a good item to kind of look at that because it gives you some tankiness with some health, gives you some um, um, ability haste, but the spell vamp is huge, which helps you survive. Here's another item that I see nobody build ever. It's just a crappy item. It's, it's a crappy item. So yeah. Okay, let's go into defensive items as well, and then we'll kind of call this real quick, and then I'm going to play a couple more games. So this item's also really simple and easy to understand. Sunfire is what you build when you're, you're playing a tank, but you want to be offensive, okay? It's that simple. You're tanky, but you're a hard-engaged, damaging tank that is you, you are a tank, but you're doing damage at the same time. You're the type of tank that's like, I'm going to be in there. I'm going to tank, but I'm also going to do damage, okay? Or, you know, a champion that it synchronizes well with. So, like, example, Mundo, uh, Amumu. This item syncs well with their abilities. Think about how does this item sync with my abilities, okay? Spirit Visage, once again, really simple. Spirit Visage is a... It's kind of like a offensive defensive item, I would say. And the way I say that is because if you are 
a champion that has a uh, spell vamp, this item basically boosts up your spell vamp because increase all healing effects and shielding effects by 30%. So basically it makes you, if you have like your champion heals himself because of like lifesteal or you have lots of lifesteal champions or I mean um, healing champions or shielding champions, you want spirit visage, okay? Think about it like that. You have a Janna, a Sorak on your team, um, and your Aatrox. You freaking want Spirit Visage because your Lifesteal or your Mundo, your Lifesteal and your Life Regen are going to be insane. Insane, okay? Next thing, Randuin's Omen, okay? Randuin's Omen basically is a good item that you build when... Um, there's a lots of attack speed items, okay? Did they, wait, did they? Yeah, okay, there we go. So if there's attack speed and crit, you want Randuin's Omen because it minimizes crit. So if you're always asking yourself, how do I know? Um, actually, let's, let's, let's switch this, actually how we're gonna do this. This one needs to be explained a certain way. So we're gonna pause on the Randuin's Omen. So we're gonna do just the AP, uh, the magic resist items real fast uh, first. Okay, so that's how you build um, Spirit Visage. Now, because I want to keep this all in one thought for you. Um, so if I need Magic Resist and I don't have a bunch of healing champs on my team or shielding champs and I don't heal myself, how do I know if I build Mask or if I build Force of Nature? How do I know? Well, this is how you know, okay? If there's not a bunch of those things that I just said, but you're an AP champion, okay? Or you have champions, I'm sorry, yeah. You have champions on your team that are fed and do AP damage or just have AP champions on your team in general. But you also kind of do damage. Mask is the way to go. Because Mask, if you read Abyssal, the passive, nearby enemy champions take 15% bonus damage. So if you have a fed Cassidy on your team and you're playing um, Shen top, all right? And well, Shen would be a bad example. You can build it, but it does kind of suck to build mask on Shen because he doesn't have mana. So let's say you're building, uh, you're playing Gragas, okay? Gragas tank. Um, you can build mask because when you dive in deep uh, and engage, when the um, Cassidy goes in, as long as he's in the near range of you, all of his abilities are gonna do uh, additional damage. So this is a way that you can be a tank and help your team do more damage. You're being a supportive of a tank. Now, if you need to just be a full on tank and you're just like, I need to be as tanky as humanly possible, you build Force of Nature. It's that simple. That's how you know which of the three magic resist items that most people build when to know. Shielding and healing champions, I need to help my team do more damage. I gotta be one tanky mother effer. It's that simple. Okay, Randuin's Omen. You build this when there's crit champions that are fed, okay? All right, it's that simple. Crit and attack speed champions, that's what you want. Now, how do you know, it's, and it's real simple. Randuin's Omen, Thorn Mail, Dead Man's Plate, Iceborne Gauntlet, uh, Frozen Heart. How do you know? How do you know which ones to do? This one, you build crit. This one, you build when there's tons of attack, um, like basic attack champions, auto attack champions that have life steal as well. Or even if they don't have life steal, just lots of auto attack champions where most of their damage is through auto attacks, but they don't have crit, you build thorn mail because the grievous wounds damages them when they attack you, okay? Iceborne Gauntlet is what you build when you're trying to increase your damage, but you also need to be tanky, okay? So if you're like, I need to be a tank, but I also need to do damage and I need to create um, more crowd control, Iceborne Gauntlet. If you're the type of champion that needs to rotate around the map a lot, then you want Dead Man's Plate, but I also need to be tanky, all right? If you're the type of champion who you have lots of health and they just have a 
crap ton of attack speed champions, okay? Frozen Heart. This is the type of item you build if they have like a Jax, a Jinx, um, a Lulu, a, um, a Twisted Fate, and a, um, what's an attack speed champion for the, in the jungle? Um, I'm trying to think of an attack speed champion that jungles. I can't think of one right now, but attack speed, tons of attack speed champions. That's what you want. Because if you look at this, chill. Uh, Yasuo, yeah, there you go. I mean, Yasuo's not the greatest jungler, but there you go. It could be Jack's jungle, there you go. Um, slows enemy attacks by 9% up to maximum stacks, 4 stacks, or 30% attack speed reduction for each individual ability for 3 second cooldown applying chill set. This, and the effect is huge. So in a team fight, you're basically lowering everyone's attack speed by 36%. This item is never built but this item can literally change a team fight. If you lower somebody's attack speed by 36%, do you realize how big of an impact? And not just one, five champions. I mean, it's probably not gonna be five. It'll probably be like three or four champions that are based on attack speed. If you lower their attack speed by 36%, you're basically reducing their damage by 36%. You have to think about it like that, okay? It's crazy. Warmogs is also really simple. This Yi, there you go, Yi Jungle. That's a perfect example, Yi Jungle. That's the perfect example. Uh, Warmogs is a game where like you have to always be in the fight as the tank or your team can't win. Warmogs is what you want because you don't have to back. If it's the kind of game where it's like, if I back, uh, we lose. Like I have to constantly be in the fight. I can't leave. You want Warmogs because it regens you so fast, okay? It's that simple. Zeke's Convergence to me is a bad item, but it is good. The way that you look at this, this is the type of item that you build uh, on champions whose alts hard engage that keep you close. So like, for example, you can put this on, um, like you could build this on like support uh, Galio, support or like on Amumu, um, you could build it on like, I'm not saying this is a great item. I'm just giving you examples. I'm not saying this is like a good item for them. I'm giving you examples of champions where this item works on. Uh, you can build it on, um, the freaking cow Alistar because it's passive basically slows them in a radius around you thresh. It stops them from being able to get away from you. Here's another item that I think is kind of crappy that needs some type of rework because nobody really builds it. And everything, but this is basically a tank healing item. So if you're a tank, you provide more heals and stuff like that. Okay. This item isn't really to me that great either. I think it needs something. I don't I don't know what it is because I don't really ever build it. But if you're a champion, basically champions that are really mana reliant, but also need health and everything, this is the item that you want. So you're a tank that's really mana reliant, like a blitz crank is. You know, one champion you see this built on all the time, okay? This item sucks. It's a piece of crap item. Supports use it. Nobody freaking uses this item because it sucks. This item's pretty legit, though. Um, so you gotta read this. If you're within 400 units of an enemy champion and you immobilize a champion or are immobilized, reveal all nearby enemy champions for three seconds stealing... 80, 80 plus five percent health as bonus magic damage. Okay. This chan this item right here. If you have CC get CC champions going against CC champions, this item right here is pretty huge because it gives your team a ton of extra damage. Okay. Really good item. Uh, it's a newer item, but it's a great item. It's super strong too. It's super strong. Uh, this one real quick. These are super offensive boots. Uh, basically, really only ADCs build them. However, what I will say on these things real fast, this item right here, or this boot right here, you can build this on non-AP champ or non-AD um, champions if you're really ahead. These boots are trash. 
Um, I mean, they just suck. They need to do something to them. I don't know. They suck. I don't think they're really that good. But they're okay. Um, obviously, these boots, if they have lots of CC, use these. These boots you build if they have um, lots of AD. These boots you build if you have really long cooldowns as a champion or um, you are realizing like, hey, I'm not winning fights because my abilities are taking too long to get. So like ability, you know, it's, it's really that simple. Really self-explanatory. They have high burst. You need to be able to stop yourself from being picked. This is a really slept on item. If they have tons of AP, you build this item and it can completely change a team fight. This item's pretty specific on just a couple champions who build it. Darius, Olaf. You need attack speed. This one basically gives you an additional flash almost. This item's great, but it's harder to use in um, Wild Rift just because it basically immobilizes CC. This item's great on tanks. When you go in, it gives you an extra huge shield. This item's obviously super simple as well. You build this item when you just need extra sustain. Teleport, the most slept on enchantment in the whole game. Once kids start getting good, understand the value of this item, the whole game will change. People don't understand the value of teleport yet in this game. Uh, eventually they will. It's huge. This item you can use as like an engaged support to like uh, defend. It's not really popular uh, just because it's a harder enchantment to use than others. Um, this one right here. Target a nearby ally champion, dash towards them, and taunt the closest enemy champion within small range. Really good item. It's just hard to use, so people don't use it. This item, super good, but once again, hard to use, so people don't really use it. Um, like, this item, really great against like something like a Blitzcrank, a Thresh, Nami. You put it on them right as you know they're about to get hooked or something, and it completely negates it. This item, great if you have healing champions or shielding champions, and everybody knows what this does. It causes a crap ton of damage as well. That was pretty long, so I'm not going to do runes and masteries or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. Do you guys have any questions real quick? Let me see here. I'll give you guys a second. See so if you have any questions, and then... We're going to be done talking about items. We'll do runes another day.